Welcome. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio, and I'm real glad that you could join us again. I'm going to speak with Dr. Scott Ebbinghaus this morning. He's from Merck Research Labs, and he's going to talk about a recent European Medicines Agency's Committee for Medicinal Products for Human Use, positive opinion on Merck's Keytruda. Welcome to the program, Dr. Scott Ebbinghaus. How are you? Uh, I'm well, Neil. Thank you for uh, inviting me today. You're with Merck Research Labs. Give us a brief background, and then let's talk about Keytruda as it relates to this this latest keynote trial. Yes. Uh, So I'm a medical oncologist uh, by background. I uh, joined Merck about uh, 12 years ago, and um, I'm currently the therapeutic area head for our late-stage oncology clinical development uh, organization at Merck. Uh, So I oversee... um, our Keytruda portfolio and uh, a number of our uh, alliances um, with uh, with other companies. Now, what condition does Keytruda treat? Yeah, so Keytruda is um, an, an anti-PD-1 antibody. Um, we have um, worldwide approvals in a number of different indications, um, the first of which was melanoma, uh, but also includes um, non-small cell lung cancer, small cell lung cancer, head and neck cancer, Hodgkin lymphoma, bladder cancer, um, and, uh, and, and several others. Could you tell us a bit about kidney cancer and um, renal cell carcinoma specifically? Yeah, so kidney cancers um, are uh, affecting about 400,000 people around the world and uh, lead to about 25,000 deaths every year. Uh, in Europe, about 155,000 new cases of kidney cancer were diagnosed uh, last year, and I died from it. Um, of those, of those, renal cell carcinoma is by far the most common. It occurs. Uh, it accounts for about 90% of all renal carcinomas. And I think importantly, um, when it's caught early, it can taken out surgically. But when it metastasizes, the five-year survival rate has historically been. Uh, less than about 10% of patients. Mm. So what is the the current treatment for this type of cancer? Right. So currently um, in in patients who've developed uh, metastatic cancer, um, treatments have included a class of drugs which are called the kinase inhibitors and immunotherapy agents. And um, the um, uh, importantly, I think the... um, uh, for patients who progress on a first line of therapy, only about 40 to 50 percent of patients um, are, you know, sort of well enough to go on to receive a second line of therapy. So we've uh, focused our efforts on improving first line therapy. And so um, it's a good segue into uh, Keynote uh, 426, which studied a combination of a kinase inhibitor targeting the VEGF pathway and the anti-PD-1 Keytruda for, um, for, for the first-line treatment of kidney cancer, and that led to the approval of um, Keytruda in the United States um, earlier this year, and um, uh, that data was uh, actually uh, presented and published um, in the New England Journal in uh, March of this past year. So what impact do you think it'll have on clinical practice overall here and in Europe? Yeah, so I think um, this is, a, in, in my view, a very significant advance for the treatment of kidney cancer. The, the, the uh, trial was a combination of um, pembrolizumab or Keytruda in combination with a drug that was already approved for um, kidney cancer in the second line setting, uh, exitinib, uh, which is also known as in Lida, um, a, a product that's uh, manufactured by Pfizer. And that combination was compared to a standard first line treatment called sunitinib uh, or sutent. And uh, the combination with exitinib significantly reduced the risk of death by 47% um, com- uh, compared with sunitinib. And uh, in addition, showed a um, uh, a uh, reduction in the risk of progression or death, as well as a uh, near uh, nearly doubling of the overall response rate. And so I think um, this uh, treatment has really been, um, you know, very, uh, very, very, very favorably viewed by um, the uh, 
the, the experts in the renal cell carcinoma community who have um, reviewed the data and I believe in the U.S. has uh, quickly um, become part of the armamentarium that physicians use for treating patients. And I believe that uh, with the European uh, positive opinion um, that just happened uh, last week and uh, the uh, hopefully upcoming uh, commission decision um, later this month or at least at some point this quarter, um, it'll make a similar impact for the patients with kidney cancer in Europe. What about the, uh, the, the side effects with, from this combination as opposed to previous combinations or the current standard? Right. Um, the, so, so for the most part, the, um, the, the side effect profile of this treatment was consistent with what we've known about Keytruda by itself or uh, the combination partner Exitinib by itself. There were some increased uh, some increases in liver function test abnormalities, so it's important for physicians to monitor for that and to follow the treatment guidelines that will be um, in the label, uh, in the European label and are already in the U.S. label, which are simply to um, monitor for uh, liver function abnormalities and to hold treatment um, if if you see uh, elevation of liver function test abnormalities uh, pending resolution. But overall, it was a well tolerated treatment, and uh, I think um, the uh, the benefits uh, are are clearly uh, evident here. I'm sorry, I cut you off. What well, What would you say would be the the ideal uh, patient profile for this uh, combination therapy? Um, so this is uh, intended for patients with metastatic uh, first line uh, metastatic kidney cancer who have not received uh, prior treatment. And I think importantly, if you look across various subgroups, the uh, benefits of um, this combination were evident across subgroups, um, including uh, favorable risk subgroups and subgroups that were defined by um, PDL1 expression. So um, really, we, we didn't find a subgroup of patients who didn't benefit. So I, I think the ideal profile really is quite broad here um, for patients with uh, metastatic renal cell carcinoma who have not received a, pre, a prior uh, therapy. A significant lifespan uh, extension, would you say, and, and quality of life as well with this combination, or is it on par with uh, previous treatments? Well, I think it. I think it's significant. You know, the the data showed that it significantly extended life. Um, you know, the uh, again the the um, in in uh, statistical terms, the hazard ratio for overall survival at the uh, analysis that at at the definitive analysis was a hazard ratio of 0.53, which you know equates to roughly. Um, doubling or cutting in half, if you will, the risk of dying, uh, doubling overall survival or cutting in half the risk of overall, uh, cutting in half the risk of dying. And um, I think that's a really uh, important um, advance. Briefly, in your opinion, what's next for, for Merck in the kidney cancer space? Yeah, so we have a very extensive clinical development program in uh, renal cell cancer, and we're uh, advancing a number of registration-enabling uh, studies with Keytruda, both um, by itself and in combination with other drugs. Uh, for example, as a monotherapy, Keytruda is being evaluated in a um, trial called Keynote 564, which seeks to determine whether um, giving Keytruda following surgery for renal cell carcinoma that's at high risk of recurring will prevent it from coming back. Um, and I think that's a really important study. We've already presented data on uh, from a study called Keynote 427, which looks at um, Keytruda as a monotherapy in patients with uh, previously untreated renal cell carcinoma. And then I think I'm, I'm very excited about our uh, combination program. We have a combination of Keytruda with another, uh, with another drug in the same class as Exitinib called uh, Lenvatinib or Lenvima. And uh, that, that combination was granted breakthrough therapy designation status by the US FDA in uh, January of 2018 for uh, renal cell carcinoma. 
uh, on the basis of um, trial results from a study called Keynote 146, uh, also known as Study 111, and we have a Phase 3 that's ongoing with that combination. Um, lastly, um, I'm excited about a recent uh, our, our recent uh, merger or acquisition with uh, Peloton, which has a HIF2 alpha inhibitor that appears to be uh, active in renal cell carcinoma, and uh, we'll be uh, further developing that compound in this disease um, as well. Where can we get uh, some more information online about Merck and Keytruda? Neil, uh, anyone who's interested can get additional information at uh, Merck.com or at Keytruda.com. Thanks for speaking with us this morning, Scott. It's been a pleasure. Yes, my pleasure as well. Thank you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Scott Ebbinghouse from Merck Research Laboratories, talking about a recent positive opinion on Merck's Keytruda as it relates to renal therapy. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.